take more interesting questions. Suppose you have a horizontal plane, infinite plane, and you have lines drawn on it at a distance of one centimeter each. So it's an infinite plane, there are infinite lines, all parallel lines have a distance of one centimeter. Now you take a needle of length for easy things, let's say one centimeter, and you drop that needle on this plane. Question is, what is the expected number of intersections of the needle from these lines? So you drop this needle arbitrarily and we are interested in finding out the expected number of intersections with these parallel lines when the needle is dropped. All these were mathematical problems. So let's take something more related to real life. Let's go to hospital. I, okay, I know you don't want to go to the hospital. So let's take an example from the hospital. Suppose there is a diagnostic test for cancer. That means it tells people whether they have some kind of cancer or not, it's 95% accurate according to the website of the test. What does it mean it is 95% accurate? If a person has cancer, then it tells you that yes, that person has cancer with more than 95% probability and it gives you an answer no with less than 5%. So it tells you correctly with 95%. If person does not have cancer, then it should answer no and it answers no with probability more than 95% and it answers yes with less than 5%. So for any kind of patient, whether they have cancer or not cancer, the answer is correct with probability more than 95%. Seems like a good test. So I need someone to test for it. So let's say, okay, I go for a test and the test turns out to be positive. You already know this statistics about the test. Now I got tested and the test turns out to be positive. Question is, what is the probability obviously that I have cancer? You might say 95%. Actually, many qualified medical professionals also give the answer as 95%, but that is incorrect. I will let you think about this question and take you to more questions about the medical field. So, there was a hospital in England which had malaria and dengue patients and when people were tested it was found out in that hospital that fraction of people with malaria so out of total number of people in the hospital people who had malaria was actually much much more than fraction of people having malaria and dengue in dengue patients. So in some sense, one quantity talks about people having malaria. This probability talks about probability of people having malaria when they already have dengue. And it seems that dengue, if you have dengue, then the probability of having malaria is less. What could be the reason? You would say this has nothing to do with probability. Probably once you have the dengue bacteria or whatever, the malaria does not come out or something. Turns out this is a probability question. How? For that, we have to learn more in this course. If this is not good enough for you, let's talk about one more survey. A survey was done in small not actually small, but lot of localities in a country. They calculated 
the fraction of people having diabetes in total population. So they wanted to figure out how healthy are, is the population. So they looked at different cities, towns, villages and found out the fraction of people who have diabetes. What were the results? They found that the five best villages, what do I mean five best villages? They have the smallest fraction of diabetes patient. These, all these were small villages. So, I should say the five best localities which had, which were the healthiest, the fraction of diabetes patient there was, was smallest. Those were all small villages. What could be the reason? And most of us would think that must be because there is a lot of fresh air in the villages, the lifestyle is active, seems reasonable. But it also turned out that the five worst villages, or I should say five worst localities, that means the fraction of diabetes patients was the biggest in, in these localities. These were also again small villages. If this was given to you independently, you might have blamed it on worse healthcare, uh, awareness issues, but now keeping both these statistics in mind, it seems that probability can explain it. How? For that again, we have to worry about the All these questions had some kind of probability framework. Let me tell you questions where no probability is mentioned. For example, the question about antigens. What is an antigen? You are given a set of n elements and an antigen is a set of subsets such that no two are contained in each other. That means there does not exist uh, U and V such that either U contains V or V contains V. And now I ask how many antichains are there? And these kind of questions actually can be answered using probability. The question has nothing to do with probability and still you can answer it using probability. Another question like that. Let's pick a set of n integers. And I would say non-zero integers. You will see why non-zero is important. And what we can show is that However, you take B, there always exists a subset S of B, which is pretty big. It has size more than n by 3, so it is at least 1 by 3rd size of B. And still, S is some free. S is some free means there does not exist S and T in S such that their sum is also equal to that. You can try to create some presets and you will see that creating it for arbitrary sets is very, very hard. So it is very, very surprising that in any set of size n, you can always create a sum preset. But again, more importantly, since all these statements can be proved using can be proved using probability. A lot of these questions which are very, very interesting, a lot of the questions have nothing to do with probability. Probability tools can be used. And this is what we are going to learn 
and for that a basic probability framework is not given enough we need a solid framework concrete framework through which we can develop our theory of probability so we will install a framework first and then we will see how clearly we can answer all the questions that we have seen so we need clearer approach as compared to what you have seen in the high school and that's what we will derive this will help us in countering 50-50-90 rule you know what a 50-50-90 rule is it's a quotation which says that whenever you have 50-50 chance of getting something right so with half the probability you can get something right you get it wrong 90% of the time this is a quote by Andy Rooney and hopefully after this course you will be better at avoiding these mistakes i will end this lecture today here in the next lecture we will start making our framework